C.S. Lewis said it this way, to love at all is to be vulnerable. Love anything, and your heart will certainly be wrung and possibly broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give your heart to no one, not even to an animal. Wrap it carefully around with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up in, a safe, in the safety of a glass jar or a coffin of your personal selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken because it will become unbreakable, impenetrable, and unredeemable. You see, no one wants a heart of stone. If you want to experience love at last sight, the kind of relationships that go the distance, weathering all the storms of life, not just to survive, but to thrive in them, you have to take risk. Now, and, then, and this is the last one. K stands for know the rewards are greater than the risk. You have to. You have to know. Look at this. Jesus said to this paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Stand up. Pick up your mat and go home. The man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. If he was standing here today, we were going to see him in heaven. And you said, was it worth it all? He would just shout out, yeah. Are you crazy? Look. I'm walking. Perhaps. You're going through some paralyzing situations in your life today. Maybe your trust has been so violated. You know, broken church relationships in so many ways, especially in this particular area of the country. You either have really good church relationships or you have absolutely dreadful church relationships. There's no neutral ground. You know, there's no, it's like 10% black, 10% white, everything else is gray with little broken glass pieces, you know? So many people I talk to who are believers are coming out of this negative, oh, this, either they've been taken advantage of spiritually or they've been dominated through legalism, whatever. They're broken, they're hurt. Their trust has been shattered. They don't know how to trust spiritual leaders. They don't know how to have dialogue with other, other Christians. The, the, they've become little forts to themselves with these high walls and these you know, the laser-guided missiles that, you know, you walk up and you just, you know, they, I mean, you know, there's the, the, this barrier. Couples. Couples have the same problem, you know, because they've gone through so much pain, so much sin. And I don't mean it's like it's this blatant, I'm going to cheat on my wife's sin. I'm talking about the fact is two sinners even though they're saved by grace, have these frailties and brokenness that they bring into this relationship. And they're kind of muzzling it through because they don't have a plan, they don't pray together, they don't spend time in the Word of God together, and, and they start growing distant and apart, and there's a distrust and an imbalance, and they don't know how to break through that, and it paralyzes you. Your kids are even worse. Why is it that 70% of kids that are raised in church, when they get to college, walk away from the faith? Why? It's because they've never had an honest relationship with their parents. Dad, you've never spoken into your kid's life the Word of God. You didn't have a meal every week where you sat down and you talked about Jesus stuff. You come to church as parents and you put on this good, happy face. I call it the Southern Christian charm. You blow in the door and everything is right with the world. But five minutes and you're in the car and you're cussing like a teamster trucker. And life is the hell in the handbasket. And you have this double standard. And you wonder why your children are flipping you the bird and saying, take a long walk off a short pier when it comes to faith. It's because you didn't have honest relationships where you had that give and take. My kids know I'm screwed up and broken. They see it, but they also hear my pain and say, this is why I'm struggling with this. You know, in the story that we saw in the video on Thursday night, Kerry Shook was talking about, he was having this conversation with his two teenage boys where he decided that he, was, he hadn't given them the time and dialogue. And he started to talk to him and say, you know, I really want to get together. I want to hear when you come home from school what your day was like, what your struggles, what your pain. 
And the kids both looked at him and said, Dad, but you don't do that with us. Ooh. He goes, what do you mean? Well, Dad, you don't share with us your pain, your struggles, what you're going through. And you see, I sat back and it was like a it's like someone taking a baseball bat and bashing me in the stomach when I'm sitting there the first time I saw it in my office watching this. Because I realized, I said, you know, there's times, even though my, my office is my home, my kids hear and see some, they don't really know, they don't know why I get angry. They don't know what my struggles are sometimes. They just know that I'm struggling. And I realized weeks ago that when I sit down and talk with my kids, sometimes I've got to share with them the hows and the whys and the wherefores and say, would you pray with me about this? We're in this together. And you see, the dynamic of that is it's going to change your relationships forever. Your relationship, the, the, it become like this weld. Do you know when, when uh, these guys take these, um, these metal parts for ships and they bond them? If you ever watch the uh, military channel when they're building the carriers down at Norfolk, you know, and they're bringing these big sections together and they're welding these things together, these components of the ships. Do you know those bonds where those welds are, they're so good, they will never break. The metal itself on the wall might break, but those bonds will never break. And you see, if you want relationships where it's welded together, where your kids and you are on that same page spiritually, I'm not going to say it's perfect. Oh dear Lord, no. Because they're still little sinners too, you know. They're still, you know, but... If you want your, your spousal unit you and to, to be bonded together, you want friends that are real friends. You know, a real friend is someone who's going to show up when you have a flat tire a mile from church and you come and bail his sorry fanny out because he doesn't have a spare. You know, I mean, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? That's a friend. A friend isn't that those 600 people on Facebook. You might have three or four that are friends. A friend is somebody you can call in the middle of the night and say, I'm having a bit of a day. Can we go to Tom Jones and get breakfast? That's a friend. And you see, I want you guys to have those kind of friendships. I want you guys to have those type of marriages. But you see, the world, the world's watching us. Scripture writer says that by your love for each other within the church, they will know that you're Christians. Acts 2, because of this love and this giving environment that we have within the church, explodes that, gives that platform to the gospel to propagate, to explode into our community. Because of your relationships with each other, you will affect the people looking on the outside. That's just the be side benefit, the overflow. But to have a relationship like that is incredibly awkward. It's incredibly awkward. It requires you to risk everything. But I'm telling you, this is your friend this morning. It's worth the risk. 